Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the earnings conference call of Usha Martin Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Devrishi Singh from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Usha Martin's Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Rajiv Jhawar, Managing Director of the company, Mr. Anirban Sanyal, Chief Financial Officer, and Ms. Shreya Jhawar from the Strategy and Growth Team of the company. We hope all of you have had the opportunity to refer to the earnings documents that we had shared with you earlier. We would now like to initiate the call with the opening remarks from the management, following which we will have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation. I would now like to invite Mr. Rajiv Jhawar to make his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the management team of Usha Martin, I would like to welcome you all to our earnings conference call. As I had mentioned in our last conference call, we remain we remain committed to conducting such forums on a regular basis. Our aim is to foster transparency and strengthen the communication channels with the investor and analyst community. I would like to begin by sharing quick operational and strategy related updates on the company, following which our CFO, Mr. Nirban Sanyal, will run you through the key financial highlights. We are pleased to report that all our strategic initiatives, including the emphasis on enriching our product mix by focusing on higher value added ropes, have assisted us in reporting healthy profitability during the quarter. On a year-on-year -year basis, our operating EBITDA increased by 24.2%, with operating EBITDA margins improving by 2.5 2.4% basis points to 17.9 percent. Furthermore, a better contribution from higher realization international markets supported margin improvement. The share of the wire rope in our consolidated revenue further improved to 68 percent in Q1 FY24 compared to 67 percent during FY23. The share of revenue from international operations also increased to 56% during Q1 FY24, compared to 55% during FY23. Further, the share of value-added industry segments in our consolidated revenue increased to 50% during Q1 FY24, as compared to 44% during FY23. Moreover, within the wire rope, the value-added segments constituted 71% during Q1 FY24 compared to 65% during FY23. The balance sheet continues to remain significantly de-risked with the net debt at rupees 99 crores end of Q1 FY24, despite a capex spend of approximately rupees 68 crores during the quarter emphasizing the significant improvements in operating cash flows before tax generated during the quarter. As we have discussed previously, we aspire to consistently undertake efforts to increase market share in international geographies to further enhance profitability and our global market presence. We are already witnessing significant traction with international customers, particularly for technical advanced wire ropes. In line with this, the company is strategically focusing on higher value specialty grade ropes. 
It is important to note that producing these wire rope requires substantial amount of engineering know-how and technical expertise. To maintain a competitive edge on the global stage, our global R&D center located in Italy plays a pivotal role in designing advanced wire rope, utilizing proprietary software to develop products that meet and exceed global standards. Through our focus on R&D, we have been successfully competing with global competitors and garnering a growing base of direct international clients. This achievement stands as a testament to our capabilities and positions us among the best in the world. Our CAPEX initiatives are progressing smoothly. The increased capacities will predominantly cater to diverse array of critical applications and value-added products, including mining ropes, non-rotating crane ropes, compacted ropes, and plasticated ropes. Our Wave 1 expansion at Rachi is on track and is expected to be substantially completed by end of Q3, supporting our revenue growth endeavors. In conclusion, I would like to express our confidence that the various strategic initiatives undertaken by Usha Martin will certainly yield positive results and drive significant growth for the company. Our team's dedication and hard work and their relentless pursuit for excellence has enabled us to achieve notable milestones over the last three years. The company remains guided by its core values of innovation, integrity, financial discipline, and customer focus. These values have been the foundation of our success and will continue to drive all our future endeavors. With this, I would like to hand over to Mr. Anirban Sanyal, our CFO, who will present the operational and financial highlights for the quarter ended 38 June 2023. Thank you. Thank you and a very good evening to everyone. I will now briefly take you through the company's operating and financial performance for the quarter ended 38 June 2023. The consolidated net revenue from operations stood at Rs. 814.4 crores in Q1 FY24 as against Rs. 758.7 crores in Q1 FY23. The company achieved a 7.3% year-on-year increase in revenue, largely due to improved realizations from our value-added and solution-based offerings. Our international operations also played a key role, recording a significant 13% year-on-year increase in their top-line performance. Our operating EBITDA for the quarter registered a healthy 24.2% increase on a year-on-year basis at Rs. 145.7 crores. Moreover, the operating EBITDA per tonne also demonstrated 25.8% year-on-year improvement at Rs. 32,227. The operating EBITDA margin of Q1 FY24 rose to 17.9% from 15.5% in Q1 FY23. This improvement in margin performance is also attributed to our strong focus on value-added products as well as our efforts to enhance our international presence. Additionally, our EBITDA performance demonstrates the strength of our business model and the strong pass-on mechanism for raw material costs that we have in place. Our net profit for the quarter stood at Rs. 100.8 crores, registering an increase from Rs. 82.2 crores in Q1 of FY23. On the balance sheet front, we have managed to reduce our net debt to Rs. 99 crores as on 30th June 2023 compared to Rs. 185 crores end of March 2023. Additionally, our cash flow from operations before tax was Rs. 177 crores for Q1 FY24. The sharp reduction in net debt, robust operating cash flows and adequate working capital lines headroom continues to support our planned capital allocations. 
We also remain committed to optimizing our working capital to reduce the overall cash conversion cycle. In conclusion, I would like to say that Usha Martin's continuing focus on product portfolio enrichment, steady growth in our international operations, continuing leadership in India, and a strong balance sheet will enable us to deliver steady and consistent growth in the future. This brings me to the end of my address. I would now request the moderator to open the line for the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Gunjan Kabra from Nivesh. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, and uh, I wanted to ask that from a bit of a turn perspective, that in FI22, and if we compare FI23, you know, engineering the general ropes, our share has reduced from 28 to 20 percent, and our geographic revenue from India has decreased from 49 to 44 percent. And, and you know, value-added products have segments have increased. So, we have seen quite a good EBITDA pattern expansion from 19,000 to 26,000 in FI22 to FI23. So, now, from here on, what kind of EBITDA pattern or if you can guide on how further this revenue mix you expect to change or do you see uh, or do you change any product mix or geography-wise? Are we focusing a lot more on exports and not on India now? And how, how the share will reduce is what I wanted to understand from EBITDA pattern perspective. Uh, you see, the uh, EBITDA pattern has definitely improved because, as I mentioned, that the product mix uh, has shifted more towards ropes and within ropes more into the specialty ropes. And mm -hmm. that that would uh, continue, the progress would continue even after the expansion because most of the expansion is towards the wire rope and that too focused more on the specialty wire ropes. Uh, in India, we have a market share of close to 65 to 70 percent, which is a very healthy uh, market share, and that is something we would continue. Whereas the our presence in the international market, there is a lot of we are at about five percent of the market share approximately, and that gives us an opportunity to increase our presence in the international market and take more market share at a at a better value addition. So I would expect that we would continue towards achieving the uh, what we had mentioned in our previous call towards 18% uh, plus uh, EBITDA margin uh, uh, on a on a uh, on a ongoing basis. That is something, and then slightly keep on increasing as the product mix improves. Okay, sir, so, so is it? Not a very conservative way because we are targeting export markets where realizations are a very high and uh, value added product as well. The expansion is coming in the value added product. So, is it, are you very conservative in your estimates or uh, how is it? You see, these products, uh, you see, wire rope, uh, while we are expanding and more and more into speciality, it takes time to enter into new markets and new customers. So, as we are progressing towards it, uh, as the percentage would increase, I'm sure uh, the numbers would uh, be better. But it is better to be cautious and move on on a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, because it takes time to open up new markets and new customers for these special products. So, Okay. We expect it to be better. Okay. As we, as we, uh, as we, as we, enter into these new product segments and markets. We definitely expect it to be better, but these take some time and we definitely would like to see things happen and and, and improve from there on. Okay. So how how much time for a wire rope uh, facility if you are starting a new CAPEX, which is, you know, in Q3 SI24, so how much 
uh, time does it take to ramp up uh, because a new plant will definitely take some time to ramp up so how much uh, you know sorry if we have normalized demand so it, does it take how 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 in how many months or quarters can we see the ramp up uh, we'll start seeing the ramp up from uh, you know the most of the project would get completed uh, in the phase 1 or wave 1 capex by q3 so we will start seeing the benefit of volumes coming from q4 and i would say that it would take uh, three to four quarters to see that these uh, not only from the production side but from the market side it would take three to four quarters to get the full benefit of the full capex start coming in okay and so with respect to us and europe fair there would be a little slow down in the business environment so uh, and we were in talks with uh, you know few customers in the us where we were trying to onboard them and in the europe last quarter you already guided that we have converted few so how is the order traction going there and uh, uh, what kind of order visibility do you have from the export market right now we have a, a, a while the overall slowdown may be there but the sectors and and the new customers which we have uh, worked on particularly on the mining sector oil offshore sector and the grain and port sector we see uh, uh, we we see a uh, good traction from these markets and all the fruits of the last one or two years of efforts by our team plus we have expanded our our uh, team in europe and us we see a good traction from our products and our segments so while there may be an overall slowdown but uh, in our sectors we 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 are uh, we are seeing that there is a reasonably uh, good demand and we don't see a much of a slowdown there okay okay thank you so much and good luck to you and the team thank you thank you next question is from the line of aman santalia from ak securities please go ahead this is first of all lots of congratulations for excellent set of numbers and you and your team hard work is reflected in the working of the co- company quarter after quarter so uh, i have few questions uh, recently i've seen sir year on year basis our employee cost has increased from 89 to 174 so this is due to whether uh, Uh, general inflation or we are investing in human resources uh, for our future expansion and all uh there is uh, uh, in india the increase is entirely on account of the wage revision which comes once in four years for the workers and the increment of officers increase in the international business is on account of new recruitments particularly to enhance the marketing and r&d functions in europe and america so these are the reasons and now that the new capacity is also getting uh, coming up in the uh, next few months so we need to really uh, build our international uh, team to be able to uh, uh, you know uh, focus more into new markets and new customers so that is the reason we have built this uh, and that is the reason for this increase okay sir yeah just to add to that uh, Uh, like you mentioned in the americas uh, earlier you we focused primarily in the houston area but over the past uh, uh, year we've also had uh, a setup uh, with people in uh, the east region in the pennsylvania region as well as the west in the nevada region uh, so i think because of uh, our focus in the us market uh, we uh, needed to expand beyond just uh the center to go to the coast to cover the entire spread uh, which is quite expansive and uh, along with that even uh, in the latin america region uh, uh, we've put in uh, not resources uh, physically present there but our team in the us and europe also travel frequently to latin america uh, to cover that market as well so these are pretty new markets for us uh the only way to grow is to hire uh talent uh, that has familiarity with those markets and the network in those markets uh and then on the other side we've also hired some uh sector experts so uh because we have focus on these uh, higher value sectors we want specialists in elevator rope in mining rope in uh fishing rope as well so in europe we've hired uh you know more people catering to uh, those specific markets such as fishing as well where we want to grow okay. 
Thank you. Sir, next question is, uh, I've recently seen a video of uh, Brandon So where uh, we have uh, dispatched a rope, uh, I, I think two rope of 329 uh, ton per, per rope. So it is, I think, dispatched from UK to Brazil. So what type of rope is uh, it is and uh, where it will be used and whether it's one of order or where, uh, whether we are getting regular order like this? Uh, these ropes are very high end, each single weight of 330 tons each. Brenton Shaw, we, uh, we have the facility to produce rope, single length ropes up to 400 tons. And uh, these ropes are crane ropes which are used for basically lifting oil platforms from one position to the other or even building big wind farms in the deep sea. And this, uh, these are used in very high tech cranes and go 4,000 meters deep in the water where they are doing all these installations. Uh, and these are very high tech ropes, uh, very high safety requirements and uh, Brunton Shaw has a premium brand in this there. And uh, these are just not one of orders. Uh, uh, Brunton Shaw has been producing these, but uh, uh, last, uh, I would say 12 months, we have seen a good traction and we have received uh, quite a few orders, uh, ranging from 150 to 350 tons per reel. And uh, the interesting part is that while the ropes are produced there, the, the wires and strands are supplied from uh, India, uh, giving us a complete supply chain control on the entire product, and thereby also helping us to get a better margin. So these would be uh, continuing. We have got some orders which would be continuing over the next three to four quarters, and I'm sure with the uh, few successful breakthroughs we have done, we should be able to do it on a continual basis. And sir, in which market we are ge ge getting the best section, whether it is U.S. market, Latin America, Asia, or European market? You see, the strongest market for us, uh, you know, the business uh, for wire rope, Europe is doing uh, is is growing uh, well for us. Uh, although the orders may be coming from Europe, but supplies may be going to Australia, going to the Middle East, or going to Brazil, as you mentioned. So the growth is what we see the growth for different products in different markets. Uh, and we see for fishing market, Europe is going to be, uh, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, breakthroughs and growth expected in the fishing markets there. On the mining ropes, we see good markets in South America, North America, Australia, as well as uh, uh, South Africa. We have got some good breakthroughs and good business uh, is, is uh, being done there. And uh, so I would say the strongest market looking forward is Europe, U.S., South America. And also we are looking at Middle East, particularly the Saudi Arabian market, uh, growing uh, faster in the coming coming quarters. Sir, one well, last question. that uh, Recently, sir, yeah, Tata Steel and JSW Steel has increased a lot of capacity in LRPC. So I think LRPC has become a, a commodity market. So whether we are uh, planning to uh, uh, go for value addition in this uh, this LRPC? Uh, LRPC definitely uh, it is it is uh, JS, JSW has come out with a large capacity a new plant uh, and 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 uh, uh, so has Tata Steel also plans to expand its capacity. The demand in India is growing, but the margins are, of course, uh, going to be under pressure because the steel companies like Tata and JSW would like to 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 take market share. Uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, our uh, our uh, the margins, of course, are under pressure on the LRPC. But our strategy is to go into more value added, almost 10 percent. So out of our five and a half thousand tons uh, production, about 500 tons. Per month, we would convert, or we have already established uh, markets into plasticated LRPC and galvanized LRPC, uh, which, which both in the domestic market and some success in the export markets. And over the next few quarters, our objective would be to continuously keep on increasing the share because they give you a much better value addition 
and those are again a high quality high technical products just not uh, selling uh, uh, lrpc as a commodity so that is a uh, lot of engineering sale goes into that uh, uh, category so our focus would be to improve uh, the percentage of plastic related lrpc in the coming quarters and so one last question whether we have received the tata money sir completely uh we received uh, we are, uh, now total 78 crores is is uh, left and we expect uh, some land transfers and some land lease transfers to be completed and we expect this money to be uh, received by uh, q4 fy24 okay so uh, by that time uh, we will be virtually debt free company uh yes we hope okay, so. and thank you for better thank you thanks a lot sir thank you thank you next question is from the line of rajesh majumdar from bnk securities please go ahead yeah good evening sir and congratulations once again uh, so i had a technical question on the uh, uh, segment wise revenue break up if you add wire rope strands and lrpc it's 90% now what is this other 10% and what is the contribution of that to our ebitda or pact that was the first question anirban can you take this question please yeah sure so the uh, other rajesh the others 10% uh, includes direct services as well as the sales from our subsidiary un cables okay and the contribution of ebitda or pact from this um we don't give out individual <laughs> segment wise uh, ebitda or uh, but services are always higher uh then what is the blended effect of uh, margins for the company as a whole uh un cables obviously uh is a little uh, lower compared to the overall ebitda margins of the company so how do we look at this 10% percent will it be going with the company in an equal way or will it come down as uh, you know the uh, capex gets completed uh, and rachi starts uh, delivering more business how do we look at this uh, number No, so FY23, if you see, uh, Rajesh, it was eight percent, and in Q1, it is ten percent. So it will be in this range uh, because the UM cable typically annually is in the range of hundred to hundred and ten crores of uh, top line, and uh, then the it depends on the services, uh, which is primarily coming out from our uh, European subsidiaries, which is linked to wire. So it would continue to be in the eight to ten percent range. Right, sir. and uh, so my next question was on the rachi uh, capex uh, what should be the asset turn from there in terms of the uh, turnover we anticipate to get from the uh, 360 to 80 crore capex we are doing this and uh, you see we are uh, from the uh, capex of 310 crores we are building a capacity of almost uh, 40 47000 tons so if you look at the selling price uh, uh, would be a blended price so it would be close to 900 crore so i would say that by the time we get the full uh, capacity it would be close to i would say two, two uh, between two to three times this is including the value add uh, mix change you are uh, contemplating right yes yes okay and this will be incrementally uh, a margin accretive in terms of the product mix as well Yes, because most of the almost sixty percent of the uh, volume of forty-seven thousand is towards wire rope and more towards the higher value added wire ropes. So, so and the balance is LRPC, plasticated, and wires, and that too in the higher segment. So we expect the uh, you know expect the uh, the percentage of wire ropes to be higher in the overall mix, even with the new expansion. Okay. And sir, is it possible to give us a breakdown of the subsidiary performance for the quarter, as you've given for the year for uh, Usha Martin International, Usha Martin Singapore, Usha Sam Steel, and all these companies? Anil Bhai, yeah, Rajesh, yeah, yeah. Typically, give uh, the performance of the international operations if you look at our uh, presentation down. But individual subsidiaries, we would uh, have been giving on an annual basis, but we'll consider your consider your side. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Part of seven, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Jazeep Valia 
from Clockwise Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, uh, Does the question of your audio is not coming clearly. Can you please speak through the handset? Yeah, is it clear now? Slightly better. Yeah, sir. Uh, you said that you want to gain market share in international markets. So, what gives you an edge uh, to gain that market share? So, would you be, uh, you know, pricing your products which are of similar quality to global uh, wire rope majors at, let's say, uh, uh, a discount so that you will gain market share because of that? Or what would be your strategy? You see, we have two. Uh, Usha Martin, uh, uh, it's a good question. Uh, the... We are, as we mentioned earlier, that our focus is to more and more increase our uh, market share in the international market. And there we are competing with the largest uh, players in this industry, uh, in our industry. Uh, our pricing would be uh, definitely lower than them because those are, but those are not significantly lower because it is just not the business you don't get only on reducing price by 3% or 5%. Uh, our strategy is a to not only uh, be competitive because of our entire integration and cost advantage so we may be 4 to 5% some places 7% cheaper but more important is the service we provide to our own distribution network and our own stock points in different parts and our own marketing and service team so being closer to the customer we are able to get uh, 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 able to get to give you an example in us we got a big contract of mining rope and uh, we started supplying to them uh, small quantities and uh, they uh, had a problem may not be related directly to the wire rope performance but they wanted our people to be flown in within within 20, within within few hours so our people went and we were able to resolve that and, and uh, had a very good uh, uh, impression on the customer. So we landed up getting a big contract uh, versus some of the big American uh, competition and which is valid for next three years. So being close to the customer, taking advantage of our own distribution and service centers, being competitive and getting some price advantage to the customer, I think a combination of this is helping us get more traction into the market. Got it, sir. Got it. And so you mentioned that you have uh, 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 started supplying raw materials to your UK subsidiaries to India. So what kind of cost advantage has it given you uh, in your UK subsidiary? Uh, if you could quantify it in terms of dollar per ton or, you know, any, uh, any such measure. You see, uh, earlier we used to buy wires from the European sources and uh, supply for the ropes being produced out of our Brenton shop. But with, uh, you know, we have now integrated all our international businesses uh, and we all run as a united team rather than running them in silos as it, as it was, uh, you know, when it, the company, uh, uh, company was uh, with the steel business. Now that we are focused on our wire rope business, we all work as one integrated team. So we looked at all the opportunities and what we did was looked at the, and we of course modernized our Ranchi plant facilities, particularly the wire drawing and the patenting facilities, thereby uh, building the capability to supply all these wires from India. So having done that, uh, we have got two advantage. Of course, the cost advantage, I would say it would be close to three to four hundred dollars per ton, uh, but also it gives a higher value added wire product from India, which is being supplied, and that is also helping us to become overall more competitive. So earlier buying wires from uh, local European sources, in many cases we were not competitive also. So one, the competitiveness has improved, the supply chain control is within the company, and that is also helping us to get a higher market share for our products in the, in the uh, international market in a win-win situation for the uh, standalone wire uh, for our rope plant in India, which is supplying the wires and strands, and of course giving a competitive advantage to our subsidiaries to get uh, higher market share uh, at at competitive prices. Sorry, sir. So I just wanted to understand the competition profile in your industry. So let's take a large market in which you operate, uh, in which you operate, like Europe. Uh, could you, uh, you know, uh, 
give us the market shares of various players in Europe? You see, the, you see, every country, wherever you have your own manufacturing, I think Bryden, Beckert and Wireco, which have got uh, large manufacturing facilities, they would be having the largest market share. Uh, you know, Usha Martin Group, we, we, we would be close to selling 29, uh, 25 to 30,000 tons uh, into that market. Uh, I, I don't have that number uh, with me. Let me, let me get back to you with specific answers on that. And uh, are Chinese companies uh, dominant in the export markets in this uh, business? No. Chinese, we are not seeing Chinese other than the uh, very small cords which they supply in the U.S. market and in some other markets, low-end products. It is mainly the Koreans which are uh, dominant players uh, from Asia in this market. Got it, sir. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. That's all from us. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from the line of Dara Mehta from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on the stupendous results that you've reported. Sir, I have three technical questions. One is, sir, how should one visualize your volume in perspective of uh, these three divisions, given the fact that I'm assuming you've taken a strategic decision to so decline in the wire and strands uh, division, which has declined very sharply. Uh, so how should one perceive your volume for FI24 and 25, sir? Uh, I would say that we are looking at uh, 13 to 15 percent growth in our uh, volume. Uh, uh, and overall, I would say 15 percent growth uh, overall between uh, FI24 uh, last year and this financial year that is something what we what we expect uh, to grow in this uh, uh, financial year uh, you are right our focus is more and more to increase the uh, uh, percentage of wire ropes and within the wire ropes the speciality wire ropes and that is something we would continue to grow our focus on wires and lrpc lrpc as we discussed earlier it is a commodity product margins are coming down because of stiff competition in the market. But our focus is to increase the percentage of uh, or increase uh, the, the, the plasticated and specialized LRPC, which gives us much better revenue. And on the wire side, we would continuously keep on adding higher value added uh, wires, uh, both galvanized aluminum zinc wires, uh, as well as uh, critical wire applications for the auto sector, that is something we, which we would keep on adding. Uh, Percentage-wise, it could keep on changing between quarter to quarter depending on how each sector is doing. If the demand of LRPC grows, we would look at even increasing our market share. While the margins may be low in LRPC, but still it adds to the bottom line. And we have a capacity of LRPC which uh, cannot produce ropes. So even if it is giving us a decent uh, contribution over our manufacturing cost, we would like to go ahead with that. In those quarters, our overall volumes may uh, look higher, our overall profitability may look better, but our EBITDA pattern may be slightly coming down because the mix of LRPC has gone up. So we as a company would like to see that our capacity utilization particularly in the commodity products, is there, and we are able to make positive margins on that. But the long-term endeavor would be to keep on increasing the uh, wire rope percentage and more so in the value-added prices. So, and to the again, to repeat the answer, about 15% uh, plus uh, minus, we should be able to increase the volume in this financial year compared to last year. So, sir, given the fact that we've seen a decline in this quarter, the uh, should I imply that the next three quarters, uh, the volume growth will be upward of 20%? It should. Uh, I would say that uh, overall, we you know, there are seasonalities in this business. Uh, with the heavy monsoons uh, in different parts of the country, uh, the construction activities have slowed down. So, you know, the LRPC gets uh, affected because of that. So there are seasonalities, but I would say that let us look at it on an overall perspective. 
we should be able to still clock uh, that kind of increase in the whole year. Yes, sir. The second question is, sir, if I look at my EBITDA per ton, that has improved substantially, and we've actually reported the highest EBITDA per ton in this in this quarter. That is a quarter one. Uh, if I take that as a number, then my revenue growth is actually looking at a 22-23 percent uh, upward, uh, because you just stated that a 15 percent volume growth can be accepted. So should that be a, a accepted number for FY24? No, no. I, as I mentioned to you, you know, we have three product portfolios, wire rope, LRPC, as well as uh, wires. Our LRPC and wires uh, volumes uh, have been lower uh, and partly because of uh, seasonality, partly because of strategic reasons and converting into plasticated LRPC. So, it would not be proper to always say that uh, the blend you know that the blended margin would would remain the same if the percentage of lrpc goes up because of the demand and volume or the wires go up so your turnover may go up but your overall profitability may go up but your blended margin may be may be may be a bit lower and if the percentage of wire rope as a percentage of the total volume goes up then it could be slightly higher so because we are in three different segments and, 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 and uh, you know, all three contribute at a different level of margins in the total turnover. So, depending on which one is having a higher percentage, like in this quarter, we are seeing that LRPC and wires are lower and ropes have been higher. So, we have seen a blended margin going up. But I would say that overall, we would say that 15% uh, increase and we should be we should be looking at that only not nothing you know i would not like to comment on any absolute EBITDA numbers for the whole year so sure. the last question is sir have we seen any facilities being mothballed in europe given the fact that we've all of a sudden gained a lot of market share uh, across the world no 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 capacities have been mothballed i would say but Definitely, uh, with a strong integration between our international subsidiaries, international manufacturing, and our parent company in India, we and we have, as as Shreya mentioned, that we have built a good marketing team both in Europe and US for these specialized sectors. We are being able to get a higher market share in some of these sectors, like uh, the large diameter ropes, what what we discussed earlier, or the fishing rope or the crane ropes and the new capacities which are going to be added, we see through our distribution network and the marketing team which we are creating, we should be able to get higher share from those markets. But it is not that there are capacities which are mothballed, but definitely we are trying to be more competitive and take some share out of those people. So, sir, what will be the industry growth rates sir, then in this particular uh, rope market of the world? You see, the industry growth rate, uh, you know, it is it is very difficult to say because each sector, you know, we are in about eight or ten different sectors, uh, mining, elevator, fishing, construction, uh, cranes, ports. But I would say four to five percent uh, would be the average uh, growth. But certain sectors are seeing a much bigger traction, particularly the oil offshore, the crane, uh, crane rope, and the mining sector. We are seeing a bigger traction coming from from these sectors. So, so this is the last one question, sir. So, should we? So, we we have a capacity of around three hundred and ten thousand. Uh, this this quarter we are running at a run rate of around hundred and seventy seven k. Sir, what will be the optimum utilization for our 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 segment, sir? So, I mean, yeah, as I mentioned to you. Like I, I, as I mentioned to you that uh, uh, over last year, we, uh, last year. Uh, against a capacity of 300,000K, we did close to 204,000 or 200,000. Uh, uh, the new capacities which we are adding would be, you know, would be getting more and more by the quarter end of quarter three. Most of it would be done and getting some benefit of that from quarter four. But assuming taking the last year's uh, 204,000, as I mentioned to you, we should be 13 to 15 percent higher overall volumes this year. So we still have room for growth, that means. In case the growth comes in, we still have room. 
the growth, one is the manufacturing side, other is it takes time to develop these new products and new markets uh, and, and it is not that you set up the capacity and you have a market, it's not a commodity, you know, it's a highly technical product, it has safety issues, you have to have approvals from customers, so, so those take some time, having been in the industry for so many years, we have a good brand and a good name, and we have a better opportunity of doing it faster, but it does take uh, some time to, to develop this. So, yes, we see over the next couple of years to see a uh, decent opportunity out of the capacity what we have to increase it also. Great. Thank you, thank you, and congratulations once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Aman Vich from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, and first question is on the uh, near customers. So uh, I believe in the last one, two, three years, we we have been able to break uh, into number of uh, big customers. So and we would have also made some supplies uh, to those customers. So if you can talk about the what is the feedback we have received from uh, such big customers and also. If we have gotten some uh, big repeat orders, uh, if they like that product, if you can talk about the same. Uh, you see, first of all, I would not like to name customers for uh, confidentiality agreements with these customers. But we have made some big breakthroughs with some big manufacturers of uh, OEMs in Europe and some big contractors in Europe, uh, they have not only, they were only buying ropes from the European and the American sources. Uh, so, there have been series of visits to the plant, audit of our plants in India and Europe, and some good breakthroughs have been made, particularly in the large crane ropes, uh, and the, and particularly large crane ropes, and some uh, big mining rope, uh, and also some uh, crane ropes, uh, uh, OEMs in America. So, we have been, uh, they have come, there was a very, uh, I would say, intense uh, review of the quality and the uh, quality assurance system, the, the, the safety and other standards of the product. So we are happy to say that uh, the company has been able to successfully get uh, as an OEM supplier to them. We have made some, uh, we have got some repeat contracts and repeat orders from them. And uh, more important, uh, we expect a lot of business on the on the on the replacement market, having been successfully supplying to these OEMs in the coming times. Uh, sure, sir, that is helpful. Uh, my next question is: so We have talked about our global market share is around only five percent. So in the next say three five years, do you see uh, Usha Martin having like ten fifteen percent market share globally? Uh, you see, why uh, definitely we you see we we are definitely going to increase our market share, uh, but uh, it would be more in the value. The five percent includes all categories of wire ropes, uh, and we are not expanding and getting into every kind of wire rope. We are only focusing more and more into the high end products, which gives uh, uh, which gives uh, uh, good margins and uh, uh, has. And you are competing mostly with the European and the Americans and the Koreans where you are able to get a much better price for your product. So our our endeavor would be to focus on these specific sectors like the mining sector, like the fishing rope in Europe, mining in South America, US, Australia and the South African markets. So we would be focusing on these markets and and for those specific high end products so we are not targeting that i want to increase from 5% to 10% in every category of rope and i would say that uh, that is the better way we have seen because that gives you a healthier uh, ebitda per ton because you are able to get uh, the service margins also because you don't only sell the product you are able to sell services you are able to uh, work with the customers closely and build a long-term relationship. And that is what is evident how we have been able to improve our margin. So that would be the endeavor. We may definitely increase from 5% to 7%, 7.5%, 10%, but that that would be more sector-specific than, than looking at the overall market share. Yeah, and just to add to that, the top 
say four to five players in the market currently have about 20% of market share. So I think to say around 15% would be uh, would not uh, be realistic because, of, uh, like you mentioned, a lot of the market is also these general purpose folks. Uh, so uh, definitely the endeavor is to get more and more uh, uh, market share from the the competition in Europe and America and continuously increase the international market share, which is currently. Uh, you know, 56% of our revenues to around, uh, you know, upwards of 60%. Uh, but, uh, like you mentioned, the market, uh, share globally would, uh, you know, still we would target around, you know, 7, 8%, uh, open on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that helps. My next question is, uh, we talk a lot about value addition on the rope side. We talk about value addition on the LRPC side. Uh, but uh, there is a very big opportunity in value addition on the buy side. Sir. A lot of our global uh, peers uh, do a lot of value addition in buy side. They also do some interesting products like synthetic rope. So uh, what are your thoughts on value addition on the buy segment as well as uh, on synthetic rope? Uh, on the wire segments, we are definitely... Uh, uh, getting into uh, niche markets of higher value added wires. When we were part of the steel business, the, what the objective was to evacuate as much as steel even in the form of wires. So that you have seen over the last two or three years, we have slowly, uh, uh, you know, brought it down and focusing more on the value added products. We are, uh, as a part of our phase two project, we are setting up a uh, zinc aluminium uh, line for higher value added wires both in the domestic and the export market and we will see that coming into operations uh, in the next financial year even on the other qualities uh, high end wires we are uh, looking at different opportunities and i would say that next two years uh, we would also focus on getting higher uh, volumes of these specialized wires because there is a, a significant uh, uh, possibility uh, of increasing the market share. The wire market is a significantly larger market than the wire rope market. I would say 8 to 10 times more. And as you have rightly said, there are big players in this. Uh, uh, and I see an opportunity uh, to grow in this segment in the, in the, coming, in the coming years. And on the synthetic rope, uh Pardon? Uh, so you missed the synthetic ropes part. Uh, on the synthetic ropes, uh, we are definitely looking uh, uh, not on the ropes part, but on some synthetic products uh, which could have a good good uh, traction on the uh, which could be complementary to our uh, service business. Uh, but right now we have no plans to get into synthetic ropes or anything of that sort for the time being. I think there is tremendous hope for us to focus and get a bigger share in our our uh, our uh, steel wire ropes. And I see that as a big opportunity. And we have a lot to uh, lot to still lot to cover in the coming couple of years, two three years. Okay. Final question from my side on the capex. So uh, phase one is almost there for us in the next two quarters, and you have uh, briefly alluded about phase two uh, capex. So uh, that will be around a similar number of 200 to 300 crore. Uh, is my understanding correct? And will this also include? We were also looking at expanding uh, some capacities internationally. So if you can talk about the next set of capex uh, and some timelines associated with them. The uh, the phase one is about 310 crores, out of which close to 212 crores is completed, and the balance would be completed by uh, by by Q. most of it would be completed by Q3, little bit maybe in Q4. So that would complete the phase one uh, part. Phase two part is 167 crores uh, in India and uh, 62 crores. Uh, in our Thailand plant. And uh, the 167 crores what we are expanding in India is again focused on mining ropes and crane rope capacity increase and some infrastructure to integrate well with our international subsidiaries so that 
and manufacturing plants uh, internationally so that we are able to serve them better and also get the full benefit of uh, the capacity integration between the two. And as far as the Thailand plant is concerned, the focus is to more crane ropes and uh, 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 crane ropes and some high quality wires and uh, elevator rope with capacity enhancement over there. With all this value and the timelines would be, I would say, the phase two would, you know, would take uh, once, you know, at least next, uh, because some of the equipment have large delivery times. So it would take about uh, another 18 to 24 months, the phase two in India to complete. And Thailand would take about 18 months to complete. We have yet to start uh, placing orders. So it would take about 18 months to complete that uh, first phase. Yes. Yeah, so Phase one and phase two coming and all this value addition which we are doing. Do you think uh, in the next two, three years, even margins upwards of uh, say 20% is also possible? I'm not talking about one, two years. I'm talking when all this value addition is done. Uh, maybe two, three years hence. Uh, is that Our endeavor would be two, three years. Our, uh, yeah, definitely I would say two to three years as we get into these higher value added products. And the service part of it, uh, as they get added, which gives you a significant margin, our endeavor would be getting higher towards those numbers. But uh, there is a lot of work to be done. And uh, with the CapEx, as well as uh, uh, enhancing our international capability of our uh, marketing and distribution network, our endeavor would be towards going towards that. Thank you, sir, for answering all the questions. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I will hand the conference to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you to everyone. I would like to thank everyone for attending this call and showing interest in Usha Martin Limited. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions. The company is dedicated to creating value for all its stakeholders in a sustainable manner. Should you need any further clarification or would you like to know more about the company, please feel, feel, please feel free to reach out to us or to CDR India. Thank you once again for taking time to join us on this call and see you all the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Usha Martin Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.